So, pulma or batasan, asa man gyud ang mas makalipay sa ginoo. Sa una, nakahinumdum pa ko, when I was still in elementary, gistorya ko sa ang mama, and yana niya akong face. And she said, Nak, I think inigda ko ni mo, guwapo ka. I was so happy to hear that. And, you know, siyempre, yung bata pa ka, mutuo ka sa imuhang mama. And then one day, uh, nasakit ko, na-infect akong ngipon, and ihubag ang left side sa akong face, na-infect siya, na-abot siya sa Leo again. It left a big scar here in my neck. This is so big and obvious. Ug na ako'y mamit nga mga bago nga tao, usually mangutana sila og yuperahan kasi mong liog. Okay. Because of the scar that looks like um wala siya giyuperahan, uh, gikan. And when I realized nga di na gid ni mawala, uh, when I was in entering high school and then college, some, somehow naka-affect siya sa imong self-confidence. Uh, because you know that this one will affect my physical appearance. So, maulaw ko makigmit o mga bago nga tao, um, maulaw tao na ta sa front because uh, of what people see and sometimes maulaw ka when they ask you what happened uh, because you know nga nag-focus sila ana, nga, you know, ani nga, ani nga scar, you know. So, until now, you know, I still struggle with this one sometimes that my physical appearance kind of like get in the way of enjoying fully the life that God has given me and in fulfilling His purpose for me. I, I tend to live a life of comparing myself to others when it comes to physical appearance. And not I regret so saying, my, my pai nag-amping ko sa ngipo, no? Di lento ni mahitabo. What if wala ni nahitabo on sa kay hong forma right now? So, I would admit nga na ako yung mga ingani nga struggle sometimes. Now, why are we talking about physical beauty or physical appearance at church? Because this is a spiritual issue. Okay? This is a spiritual issue and the Bible talks about it. So, naani sa Biblia nga teaching, Therefore, gusto ang ginoo nga makaibaw taani. Gusto siya makaibaw tag unsag yun ang true beauty. Because it affects your spiritual life if sayop imong view Ani, uh, some people hates God, you know, and, and, you know, some people is bitter with God or some of them commit suicide because of their wrong interpretation or wrong view on how they look sa ilang physical appearance. Second reason is this is a big struggle, okay? This is a huge struggle um, even for Christians, women, and even men, young and old. Um, especially right now, nga nanata sa age, sa social media, and K-drama. You know, social media will make us compare ourselves to other people. You know, mas, mas guwapo ba ko nila? Mas niwang ba ko nila? And Korean drama causes us to despair. <laughs> you know what I mean? Abi ni mo guwapo ka, abi ni mo guwapa ka, but then when you saw this... Korean, you know, uh, actors and actresses, makengon kya nga, layo na day ka tayo. And, madiscourage ka, sometimes it will create a disappointment sa imuang heart. So, maybe you are struggling too. Maybe nag-struggle po kaani. It is easy to be caught up in this wrong thinking of beauty when you are a member of a church or a group or imong company ba um, or imong workplace nga daghan og mga yang people. You know, when there's a lot of young people, dali kay ka mag-struggle ani. Because, butanaw ka nila, uh, you, they are getting prettier or, you know, handsomer, if na ba yung nga term, uh, and fitter. And you look at yourself and, you know, you, you're getting older. That's what you see. And with age comes fats. Uh, with age comes wrinkles. Yung old-fashioned sense. Hindi ka ganahan mo try mga bago karaan na yung fashion sense and then up po mga bad postures that will come because of your age. Uh, or sometimes when you belong to a group or a church or a company or a workplace, siguro, nadaghag mga rich uh, people. Uh, maybe like high school reunion or college reunion ni mo or someone's wedding, nadaghag tao. Uh, rich people, I notice they, they naturally looks good. Uh, because of what they have. So, marami tawag, tungod kay rich sila, they look good. 
automatically and, and you look at them and, and you think nice nah, nothing like budget no uh, they can they can do whatever they want to look good because they have money and you look at yourself and I don't have money and I don't think I will look good you know like like that so this is a common struggle of anyone no matter on say mong age no matter on say mong background um, no no matter Christian baka or daily this is a struggle and it affects our spiritual life. Um, what are the effects of physical appearance issue? Kung wata ka sa biblical nga uh, gitublo about sa atong physical appearance, uh, sometimes na siya mga very bad effects. Like for example, it affects your spiritual health. If you see yourself as an ugly person, you will look at God with bitterness um, for how He made you. Diba? Ano ang ani man ko Lord, ano ang ani man ko nimo paghimo. Some sometimes na kay bitterness because to you you are not beautiful or di ka handsome. Uh, your struggle will make you lose confidence in front of other people and sometimes will lead you to not fulfill God's commands to face people and to talk to them about the gospel passionately because maulaw ka sa imong physical appearance. Uh, you will put a wall around yourself by not going all out sa pag-fellowship sa other Christians because you are conscious of your appearance. If you are insecure, also sa imong physical appearance, including your shape, especially if chubby ka or medyo nigain ka weight, if, if you are insecure, you will try to compensate your insecurity by being proud in other areas sa imong life, like talents and uh, you know so nakay tendency nga manghinambog kung unsay talent nimo tungod kay para nimo di man gani ko guapo or guapa at least talented ko so you will boast about your talent or your money or imong position or imong family influence or imong achievements and you know parents um, who are insecure they tend to to boast about their kids you know <laughs> uh, to compensate of their insecurity and we know na dangerous na siya because pride is one of the strongest enemy of our faith. And um, another thing is that you will feel like you cannot enjoy the fullness of your Christian life because your physical appearance gets in the way. And then did you know that being obsessed with outward beauty may corrupt your heart and your mind? And this is shocking to me, but this is what happened to Satan. One, one of the things that happened to Satan, that's why he became a fallen angel. In the book of Ezekiel uh, 28 verse 17, it says, this is God kind of like talking to, to, to Satan. He said, your heart was filled with pride because of all your beauty. Your wisdom was corrupted, how? Listen, by your love of splendor. So I threw you to the ground and exposed you to the furious gaze of of kings. So if obsessed ka ita sa physical appearance na to and sa atong beauty or sa atong pagkahansam, it may corrupt your your heart and it will make you, of course, proud. It will make you arrogant and it will make you glorify yourself and dili na ang gino. Another thing is that it affects your mental health. Physical appearance issue, if you don't um, take it uh, rightly, it will affect your mental health. And this is true in adults, but mostly concerns young people. There was a study that has established that adolescents who have negative concerns about their body image can be more easily to be affected by teen depression than those who do not have any such concerns. And these children may have anxiety issues also, and some of them may develop suicidal tendencies. So, ang uban nga um, negative kayo ilang tanaw sa ilang physical appearance, they tend to be depressed, suicidal um, thoughts and struggles, and then anxiety as well. Uh, thirdly, it will affect your marital health if you are married or if not as a relationship. A spouse who feels like his or her partner does not like how he or she looks will give reservations in in showing love, care, or service because of their weak self-confidence 
maulaw sila mag-sweet, magpa-sweet-sweet, maulaw sila mag uh, mo love or mo care because na sense nila na ikaw wala ni mo na appreciate kung sa ilahan physical appearance or um sige sila kada mo og something negative gikan nimo some spouses who do not understand what true beauty is will be persuaded to look at someone else uh, especially men and even women you know when the physical appearance of their spouse do not appeal to them anymore due to changes nga tumud kay nanay dag ng anak or dugay ni sila na minyo nagkaedad na or nagkalisod financially uh, di na mo appeal nila ang physical appearance sa ilahang partner so na iba nila mangita gid pain and there are so many other negative and disruptive effect of having a wrong view of your physical appearance and we don't have time to talk to, you know about all of them but at least i have given you some um some effects negative effects if wala ka kaibaw kung unsa gyud ang tinuod nga beauty now we are attracted to beauty people are attracted to beauty and i don't think that is wrong in itself i think it is god's thumbnail in our life okay but we must have the right definition of beauty first according to god or else we will be chasing the wrong concept of beauty and that's when our desire for beauty becomes dangerous so dili sakto imo ang understanding sa true beauty you will chase it and it will become dangerous for you also bear in mind nga ang atong istoryahan karon is only about physical appearance and we're not talking about the beauty of nature or arts or designs uh, because i think uh, we should approach them differently but we are only talking about physical appearance right now so we need to answer the question what is true beauty and does our physical appearance matter what is true beauty and mo matter ba ang atong physical appearance so naay duha ka sources of answer to this question the world eh, or, or the lord di ba ang kalibutan or ang magbubuhat so let's start with the world's concept of beauty first unsa may ginasulti sa kalibutan sa culture sa mga tao kung unsa ang true beauty now the world standard for beauty focuses on the outside it's about the view kung sa ilang makita or the tangible things kung sa ilang mahikap the, the physical aspect the world has set requirements so you can be considered beautiful na sila criteria for judging you know what a contest there's body shape uh, maybe 50% i don't really know skin color uh, 20% <laughs> facial symmetry hairstyle imong makeup imong fashion sense etc there are so many criteria or standard ang kalibutan for someone to be called beautiful or good looking and if you will fail you do not have the right to be called beautiful or good looking and so daghan kayo mag struggle ani daghan kayo masakitan daghan ba depressed kay the world told them nga dili ka beautiful now here are some problems of the worldly concept of beauty number one, outward beauty does not satisfy your soul ang imong ka gwapo ka gwapa sa gawas dili siya makasatisfy sa imo ang inner being in this age it is not even enough to be beautiful or handsome you have to be more beautiful or more handsome and once you think you look better you will want more gusto ko mo saka sa ranggo as as a beautiful and a handsome person and this cycle will just go on and on and it does not really make someone joyful even if considered nakasakalibutan as beautiful by the way not all physically fit or physically beautiful people are happy did you know that some of them are sick some of them are depressed some of them are stressed uh, some of them are forcing themselves to not eat uh, some of them are not yet satisfied with what they have and how they look because they want more they always worry about how they look in person and online uh, because they worry about what people will say about their beauty if Nine mga times nga, they will not look good, you know. And one bad angle lang, or one bad picture, 
they will be bashed and uh, people will be disappointed. So, so mahadlok sila. So they need to look beautiful every time. And what a miserable way to live if nga na yung life, di ba? Lisuda po na nga na kinabuhi. You cannot be uh, the real you because mahadlok ka sa isulti sa uban. And by the way, also not all chubby people are lonely. Some of them are the happiest persons you have ever met and um, some of them are, are just happy with life. Now, there was a research done by the National Institute of Health, this is abroad, to examine whether weight gain in newlywed couples was a positive or negative reflection of their happiness. And the study followed couples who had been married for more than four years and it examined their emotional health and levels of stress. And it was found that couples who had recently been happily married, katong mga malipayon sa ilang kaminyon, sa ilang love life, were twice more likely to put on weight. Whereas couples who reported being not as happy with their spouses were less likely to gain weight. So normal daw nga, nga mo gain ng weight ang mga happy sa ilang marriage or relationship. And katong dili kayo malipayon, uh, dili kayo sila uh, mugayin of weight. The study reached the conclusion that happy couples gain more weight because they don't have the need to attract another partner and they feel happier the way they are. Whereas couples who feel unhappy in their relationships are unable to gain more weight due to stress. Okay? So delete na ng niwang Malipayon. Ngayon ba nila stress? Hindi lang ka na chubby, lonely. Some of them are just happy with their love life. Um, and yes, getting on a diet is very helpful. And we should, I think we should do that. Taking care of our body's health is also needful. I think all of us should take care of, of our body. All of us should go on a diet. But when you follow the world standard of beauty, you will fall in a trap filled with dissatisfaction, okay? So, that's the first problem. The second problem is that outward beauty is expensive. Mahal kayo magpagwapo or magpagwapa according sa standard sa kalibutan. A lot of money that is supposed to be used for the church and for the work of the ministry uh, as an offering has been diverted into spending to improve someone's appearance <clears throat> or someone's looks. It's not wrong, by the way, to spend money to take care of your body or to take care of yourself uh, or your face. That's your right. But not to the expense of spending money to take care of your soul. How about your soul? I would rather give more to the church every month than to the salon or to the barber shop or to the department store or to the fitness gym. Sometimes, it's not a lot of mga establishment kaysa sa church sa Gino. I would rather invest more in Christian books that will shape my character than to the things that will enhance my looks or physical appearance only. There's a question, is plastic surgery wrong? This is a big question right now. Well, if it relates to someone's health, I think it's okay if if we improve my health kay naay na surgery nga himuon ay um na uh, improvement ng mo sa mong lawas, I think it's okay. But if it's only relating to someone's looks, gusto na ka mo improve ang imuhang forma para mas makonsider ka nga mas guapa or mas guapo, I think it is ungodly. Why? Because aside from it is a sign of discontent, waka na kontento kung sa yatag sa ginoon mo, it is also very expensive. Dili wise. Financially, it is wasting your resources that could have gone to the ministry if only you were content with your God-given physical appearance. Third problem is this. Outward beauty only lasts for a while. Outward beauty only lasts for a while. A relationship or marriage built on physical appearance will surely be shaken when fats, wrinkles, or sickness starts to appear as we age. So it will be a very weak marriage if physical appearance lang inyo ang gibasihan. Worldly standard of beauty discriminates people 
born with physical disabilities or deformations. If tinood niya ang worldly nga standards sa beauty mo ay sakto, how about those people nga gianak nga na ay inborn nga disability or inborn nga, nga deformation? Dili na dahil sila beautiful, you know? Di na sila handsome. Katulad ang mga guwapo-guwapa according sa kalibutan, you know, that's, that's very discriminating. I don't think that is right. You know, I don't think that that pleases the Lord who created all of us. Now, here's the Lord's standard for beauty. So we have seen the world's standard of beauty and its problems. Now, anita sa standard sa ginoo sa beauty. The Lord's standard for beauty is internal, dili, dili external, okay? And it is based on value, not based on view. Diba ang kalibutan based on the view? But the Lord's standard is based on your value as a person. So first of all, number one, everything that the Lord created is good and beautiful. Iman ina, anan niya gibuhat sa ginoo, maayo o beautiful. In Genesis 1 verse 27 to 31, the Bible says, So God created human beings in His own image. Okay? So, kitang tanam, we are created in God's own image. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. And then in verse 31, it says, Then God looked over all He had made, and He saw that it was very good. Everything that the Lord made is very good. Now, the word good here means to be in harmony with God. And it seems to suggest that everything fit uh, for its for purpose. So to be very good is to be in harmony with God and to fit for His purpose in creating us. And that's what it means to be truly beautiful. You know, to be in harmony with God and to fit according to His purpose for creating you. And the Bible says that God saw everything He has made. And it was very good. Now, ang category nga, ugly, it did not came from God. Gika na sa mga sinful nga mga tao nga nagbuhat ani nga category. Sinful human being created these descriptions. But in God's eyes, every creation, as far as outward appearance is concerned, is beautiful and very good because He, the Creator, is Perfectly beautiful. That means dili nakakinahang lang o make up or you know skin whitening or additional nga height or you know lesser nga weight or more weight or bagong nga clothes every week or social media filters or you know Photoshop editing para lang makonsider ta nga beautiful or very good or handsome by God because for Him if you are His creation you are very good you are beautiful. Now, that does not mean nga ipanglabog na ni mo yung mga make-up, okay? Or ayaw na add barber shop or salon or ayaw na palit o mga bagong sinina. Of course, you know that that's not what I mean, di ba? We should still look good and clean, you know, the best that we can in front of people. But it means you don't need the approval of the people para sa iyong physical appearance. Just for you to, to be considered handsome or not, beautiful or not. Because dili sila ang may right nga mo categorize nimo. Only the one who made you has the right uh, to say if you're be- beautiful or not. And and he said, yes, you are beautiful. You are good looking. You are good for God according to His purpose. Bahala dili ganahan ang mga tao. You know, as long as God approves it and God likes it, I think that settles the matter. I believe the Lord wants all of us to remove in our mind the the word or the category nga ugly or dili guapa, you know, or, you know, um, guapa na gamay. <laughs> because when it comes to our physical appearance, God alone has the right to describe us. And those words does not fit the description that God has given us. To God, all His creations are very good. Hindi na yung banyan. Anong naman lagi kuan be? Sin or sickness or kamatayon. Karun. Those are not good. Those, those are not beautiful if God made all things very good. Anong naman yung mga ingana? It's because dili ang ginoong naghimuan ni nila. Okay? Um, 
<clears throat> that sin and sickness and decay is because of sin committed by man. When God created everything, it was perfect. But in man, sin and sin brought all the bad things into the world that the Lord has created. But the good news is this. Sin and death and decay is already defeated by the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if you trust Christ fully as your Lord and Savior, the mess of sin, decay, death, um, it will be canceled in your life. And in the end, in the end of the age, you will partake of the perfect new heaven and new earth that the Lord will create for those who trust in His Son, Jesus Christ. Uh, listen to Revelation 21, verse 1 to 4. Revelation 21, verse 1 to 4. Uh, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared, and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them, and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. Wow. New heaven and new earth. If you will trust Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sin and uh, to save you from death and hell, you will become his people and you will live with him in the end of the age, throughout eternity, in this uh, perfect place, the new heaven and the new earth. So you see, God who made you is perfectly beautiful and his plan in the end of times is to restore the original beauty that he created among his creations that is destroyed because of sin and because of the enemy. But because he made you, but because God made you, he alone has the right, again, to categorize or describe you. And when it comes to Atuan physical appearance, he has no other category except good and beautiful. Number two principle is this. In Christ, everyone is equal. In Christ, everyone is equal. Um, listen to Galatians 6, verse 26 to 28. For you are all children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. And all of you have been united with Christ in baptism, have put on Christ like putting on new clothes. 28. There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male or female. Now, th this this part does not refer to our gender because obviously we still have male and female, but, but this means uh, male are not more valuable than, than female or female is not valuable than male. It, it, it's now equal. For you are all one in Christ. In simple explanation, this means that no one is above the other. You know, everyone is equal in blessings and standings as long as you are in Christ. And that includes our physical appearance. We are equal in Christ. Now, understanding this equality will eliminate the comparison trap. You know, can I compare my own self sa uban, di ba? Pride will say, I am more beautiful or, or more handsome. Self-pity will say, I am ugly. <laughs> but both of these statements, do you know that th these statements came from comparisons, both of them? You said you are more beautiful because you compared yourself to someone and you made a biased conclusion. Uh, you said that you are ugly or less beautiful because you compared mo yung self sa usaka person and he mo kag unbiblical nga conclusion nga dili daw ka beautiful listen we do not need to compare ourselves to each other because we are equal in Christ and you cannot compare something to its equal di, di mo pwede compare si Shapi sa Shapi <laughs> because they're just the same they're equal you always compare Shapi and and Lazada right it's the it's the same sa tua. We cannot compare ourselves to other people. You know why? Because we are equal with them in Christ. 
That's the reality. That's that's the truth. That is what is biblical. You can only compare yourself, by the way, to Christ. If gusto mo kang anaka, you compare yourself only Christ. Kay siya lang dili equal ni mo, and he is infinitely greater than us. But the rest of the people, there should be no comparison between us because we are equal in Christ. Third principle is that true beauty, listen, is godly character, not physical appearance. True beauty is godly character, not physical appearance. In other words, ang tinuod niya pagkagwapo o gwapa, wala sa forma na asa ito ang batasan. Kaya na asa ito ang batasan. People judge by appearance, but God looks at the heart. 1 Samuel 6.17 but the Lord said to Samuel, Don't judge by his appearance or height, for I have rejected him. The Lord doesn't see things the way you see them. People judge by outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Anawon sa gino, di lang imong korma, kung di lang imong kasing-kasing, ang imong batasan. And godly character will earn genuine praise from people and from, from the Lord. Proverbs 31 verse 30, it says, Charm is deceptive, and beauty does not last. But a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. If you want to be praised, uh, you know, if, if you want to, to hear that you are a blessing to other people, cultivate your godly character. The beauty of a godly character will never fade, and it is also precious to God. In 1 Peter 3 verse 1 to 6, this is talking about the wives submitting to, to the husbands. And Peter said, Don't be concerned about the outward beauty of fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry, or beautiful clothes. You should clothe yourselves instead with the beauty that comes from within. The unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is so precious to God. In other words, Ang beauty, ang, ang godly character, it's a beauty that will never fade. And and it is so precious to God. Importante kayo siya sa ginoo, if not a godly character. Godliness also has eternal values. Uh, 1 Timothy 4 verse 8, Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life, and in the life to come. So Paul is saying, Nga okay man, may mag-training ka, may exercise ka, but more importantly, you should train yourself to be godly because it has an eternal value. Also, Paul said it is fine even if our physical bodies are decaying as long as our spirit is being renewed every day. Uh, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 16, That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are decaying, or dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. That's what's important, you know. Uh, we cannot stop the decay, the, the aging of this physical body, temporary temples. But it's okay, as long as your spirit are being renewed every day, and it will last forever. So, in application, I think you should spend less time worrying about improving your looks and more time thinking about improving your character. Um, mas dapat ka mabalaka sa imong batasan kaysa sa imuhang forma and pangitag mga paangi, pangitag mga way na mag-grow ka sa imong character and you know, improve it because it will last. Ang imong forma, mawala ka na kadugayan. But when you say character, it's always gonna last. When looking for someone to marry, always consider the character first before ang iyahang forma or ang iyahang looks. Why? Because again, ang imong beauty, ang imong physical ang appearance, you know, as, as you age, it will never be the same. But ang imong character, ignake godly nga character, and your spouse has a godly character, it will grow over time and mas ma mas may join in your marriage life, mas makaserve mo together sa ginoo if you uh, marry because of character and not because of good looks. If you have a godly, uh, responsible, serving, efficient husband or wife right now, you have a beautiful spouse 
Maski yun sa pahingon sa kalibutan, you have a beautiful or handsome nga spouse and put that in your mind, put that in your heart. Don't look for anyone else or anything else because you have the best that the Lord has given you. Don't let them feel nga di sila enough physically. Don't let them feel nga di ka satisfied sa ilang physical appearance. Why? Because that's not what matters most. If they are responsible, if they are Christians, if they're helping you to go spiritually, then that's what matters most. Love your spouse. Serve your spouse. Enjoy life together. Be content with one another. Maski kung sa may tabo sa inyong mga physical appearance. Because your spouse is from God. And if he or she is godly, on the inside, he or she is truly, wonderfully beautiful. Sometimes you need to go on a blind date with your spouse. you know, uh, Which means be blind on the outward appearance and see and feel the character only. Because maodun na mas importante. I also find it very helpful in marriage to reminish all the good things that your spouse has done to you and, and for you. So that uh, you can see past his mistakes or any young imperfections. Nga maoy gusto ni Satan nga makit animo. Kaya ni yang mga Imperfections, mistakes. You know, but that's, that, that doesn't help. Um, sometimes it's very helpful to remember in your mind all the good things that your spouse has done for you. And it will help you realize uh, the Lord has given you a godly, responsible, imperfect, but consistently growing uh, spouse. Na iban mo yung nga, di na lang na kuwati mo na na kung lawas tungod kay inner character or maunday na true beauty ang imong imong batasan. So bahala kung saan ay purma na ko or saan ay smell na ko on the outside. Part of being godly on the inside, listen, is taking care of what's outside. Okay? Part of being godly on the inside is taking care of what's outside. But you don't take care of what's outside to please people. You take care of what's outside because of the inside, godly and you want to please the Lord. Someone who truly understands that God is beautiful and that you are beautiful since you came from God and that your godly character is beautiful and valuable to God, he or she will take care of God's beautiful creation, di ba? Ano bitaw mo palit ka regalo nga kay bawo ka nanindot in mahal. Um, imuha ba din ang palitan og dili nice or baratuhon ra nga paper bag or gift wrapper. No, you will buy the best uh paper bag or the best gift wrapper for that expensive gift because you know that's the right thing to do, di ba? So those people who will neglect their health or cleanliness, uh, surely they do not understand how beautiful they are in the Lord. But those who understand how precious he or she is to the Lord, they will take care of themselves outwardly. Okay? But he will not be obsessed by it. They will not obsessed by their physical appearance. They will never forget that it's character, godly character and true beauty. Dili ang imong physical appearance. Uh, they will not try to please the world. With their, with their physical appearance. That person's only passion is how to please God by his godly character. Ugdili, how to please the people by your physical appearance. Now to close this, I've heard a story told by Pastor John Piper in his podcast. And this is the story about a lady missionary named Evelyn Brand. Okay. I'll, I'll just read the story because there are so many details. Listen, Evelyn Brandt was born in England in 1879 and didako siya sa Osaka well-to-do British family. She studied in a, in a very famous school and she dressed in the finest silk of the day. Which is mahalon kayo yung mga sinina. She looks beautiful. She was resoundingly converted to Christ though and then the emotion Christian, she married, and then she went with her husband to minister as a missionary dito sa India. After about 10 years, her husband died at the age of 44. So, si Evelyn Brand, the only siya sa ilahang balay sa England, broken, beaten down by pain and grief. But after one year of restoration, and against all the advice, nibalik siya sa India alone as a missionary. 
He went to the mountain kung, kung di sa sila nag-serve sa iyang bana. Her soul was restored and iyang gipour out ang iyang life um, in nursing the sick, teaching, farming, lecturing, wearing orphans, they're, they're cleaning the jungle land, pulling teeth, establishing schools, and spreading the gospel. Ang gipuyan ganit niya ato is only a portable hut, 8 feet square, uh, for a season that could be taken down or removed and then pull up again. Gamay lang kayo nga balay na pwede mabalhin-balhin. At age of 67, Evelyn Brand fell and broke her hip. And her son, Paul Brand, who is a famous surgeon at that time, encouraged her mom to retire because she had already suffered a broken arm, several cracked vertebrae, recurrent malaria, and other sickness. But then, ang respond niya is this, Paul, you know these mountains. If I leave, who will help the village people? Who will treat their wounds? Who will pull their teeth and teach them about Jesus? When someone comes to my place, then and only then, I will retire. And then she worked on. Nikodayon siya trabaho. And then at the age of 95, she died. The villagers buried her in a simple cotton sheet so that she would decompose and be part of the mountains. Her son commented, Monisulti sa yung anak, with wrinkles as deep and as extensive as any I have ever seen on a human face, she was a beautiful woman. Now here's the, the, the great part. For the last 20 years of her life, of Evelyn Brand's life, she refused to have a mirror in her house. Wala siya summon for the past 20 years sa iyang life because she was consumed with ministry. Not mirrors, not self, pleasing God and not pleasing people. And a co-worker remarked that Granny Brand was more alive than any other he had ever met. Now, the message today is not to remove your mirrors sa imong house. Dealing ayaw na lang pagsamin. But focus in your mission. Focus on developing your character on the inside. Focus on serving the Lord on the outside. Focus on preaching. Focus on telling others about Jesus. Be beautiful and handsome on the inside. Aim for God's likes and God's shares. Not the people. Not men's. Not the world. And by doing it, you may fall behind with the world's standard of beauty. Because you are sacrificing for the Lord. But that's okay. You know why? Because you don't live for the world, you live for the Lord. I want to end this message with a quote. The beauty of Christ is the beauty of love, not the beauty of looks. And the beauty of Christ is the beauty of sacrifice, not the beauty of skin. May the Lord bless all of you.